Back at her again, round three through the Smith Car Chris Mercy of Yahweh Yasha, downtown Chicago, uh, June 26, 2024. So Wednesday afternoon, the Wadi Yahweh Shana Yasha for giving us the opportunity chance to come out here and do so. Lifting up the names of Yahweh Yasha and Barack Adam to the uh, elders of Aki Mahakwa from the state of so with that, I'd like to give all praises, glory and honor to to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah Ba'ashem, Kakadash, and the Heavenly Father, true name is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Ba'ashem, and the name of Mashiach, Yahweh Shah. Those are their true names in the ancient Pedro Heap, the last one passed on the tongue. And I say, Barak to the uh, elders, Wahakim Aqwa, for the say Shalom. So once again, back out here, Greg, uh, back out here again, round three, in the spirit of our mercy, I mean, Yahweh Yahweh Shah, Wadi Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah. To that Isaiah 13 and verse 17, I seen a, uh, a video clip from uh, Dabu 7. I believe he changed his name, his YouTube uh, channel, uh, from uh, formerly known as uh, Dabu 7. He was saying something about uh, Russia is going to do a uh, potential retaliation towards the United States. What happened to uh, Kremlin? You know, that uh, over there in uh, Kremlin, that area over there, we had Ukraine like a couple days ago use their airstrikes over there towards Russia. And then Russia is ultimately promising a, a, a retaliation strike towards the United States. And that goes into that Isaiah 13 and verse 17, which I'm about to bring up. Let's see where. Hey, so that shows you that those tensions between Russia and the United States is, is heating up, you know. This is uh, Isaiah. Yeah, this is uh, the prophet Isaiah 13, verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the means against them, which they shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in. Right, so the Heavenly Father is going to continue to put that, stir up those spirits against the means, uh, against the uh, uh, Babylon, you know, against the Western countries. And that's why we're seeing escalations are heating up between both sides, you know, uh, against the Western countries of Babylon, against uh, Russia, you know, so it's going to increase a little more. And as for silver and gold, they shall not delight in it, you know. Isaiah 13 verse 17, I'm going to read again. Behold, I will stir up the needs against them, which they should not regard for silver, and as for gold, they should not delight in them. Uh, this is uh, the prophet Ezekiel. Yeah, this is uh, the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 4. And I will, it says, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth in all thy army, close and close. All of them cloak of all sorts of armor, and a great company of buckles and shields, and all of them kind of swords. Right, so it makes perfect sense as I brought out that Isaiah 13, verse 17, and Ezekiel 38, verse 4. As the heavy father going to continue to put that, uh, that hooks in back into these jaws, and these rushes to be in that war, like man said. While we're seeing the Russia Ukraine situation is heating up, we're seeing NATO versus Russia is heating up, Russia versus the United States, and that's heating up as well, too. So that's a prime example of the Heavenly Father's going to continually put that hooks and back into the jaws of these Russells to continually be in that war like Dan said, and that's what we're seeing. You know? This is uh, the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 5. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with all of them were shielded him. The prophet Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 6. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tokomo of the North Coast, and all his bands and many people with thee. The prophet Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 7. Be thou prepared, prepare for thyself and all thy companies that are assembled unto thee. Be thou a guard unto them. Right, so Russia is going to be in guard to these nations, Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, and Turkey. While we're seeing escalations are at an all, all-time high over there in Western Asia, you know, and we're seeing the uh, escalations are heating up with the Russia-Ukraine situation as well, too, and other different uh, nuclear es escalations and tensions are heating up with like, the whole planet Earth as well, too. You know? Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 8. After many days thou shalt be visit, and a lot of years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back forth from the soil, and is gathered out of many people. And against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought back forth out of the nations, which they have well safety of all of them. Ezekiel 38, verse 9 Thou shalt descend and come up like a storm, and thou, thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, and thou shalt fall by bands and many people with thee. Ezekiel 38, verse 10 Thus saith the Lord of and it shall also come to pass in the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think they will fall. The prophet Ezekiel 38, verse 11. Thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of all villages, and I will go to them that are at rest, and that dwell safely. Of all of them, they will be dwelling without bars, and having neither bars nor gates. The prophet Ezekiel 38, verse 12, And to take a spoil, and to take a prey, and turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited. 
the nations which have gotten cattle and that dwell in the midst of the land. The prophet Ezekiel 38 verse 13. Sheba to Dan and the mercies of Tarsus with all the young lions that Rel shall say unto thee. It says, uh, Art thou come to take a spoil as I gathered thy cup to take a prey to carry the queen, silver and gold, to take away half of the good, and take away great spoil. The prophet Ezekiel 38 verse 14. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto God, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, thy power. In that day when my people of Israel to well say that thou shalt not know it. <coughs> Ezekiel 30, 38 verse 15 And thou shalt come up from the place out of the north parts of many people of thee and all the running all the horses in a great company and mighty army. The prophet Ezekiel 30 verse 16 And thou shalt come up against the, against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. And it shall be in the latter days that I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified of thee, O God, before their eyes. <coughs> the prophet Ezekiel 38 verse 17 Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, all dogs whom I have spoken a old time by my servants and prophets of Israel, was prophesied in those days of many years, that I will bring thee against them. The prophet Ezekiel 38 verse 18, and it shall come to pass at the same time where God shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord of Allah, that my fear shall come upon my face. Verse 19, for my jealousy and the fire of my wrath have I spoken surely, and that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Ezekiel 38 verse 20. So that the fishes of the sea, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the field, and all in the field of the creepy things that creep upon the earth, and all them that are upon the face of the earth, shall shake in my presence. And the uh, mountains shall be gone down, and the steps shall fall, and every shall fall to the ground. The prophet Ezekiel 30 verse 21, and I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains. Said the Lord Yahweh, and every man's sword shall be against his brother. The prophet Ezekiel 38 verse 22, and I will plead against him with the pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon the bands and upon the many people that are with him, and they overflowing rain and great hailstones and fire and brimstones. The prophet Ezekiel 38 verse 20, thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know I am the Lord, Yahweh, thy power. The prophet Ezekiel chapter 39 verse 1. It says, Therefore thou son of man prophesy against God and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O God, and the chief prince of Meshach and Tobal. The prophet Ezekiel 39 verse 2, And I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee, and I will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and I will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. The prophet Ezekiel 39 verse 3, And I will smite thy bow at thy left hand, and I will cause thy arrows to fall at thy right hand. Um, get that Matthew 24 and verse 6. Yeah, this is out uh, of Matthew 24, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled for all these things must first come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right, so these all these wars and rumors of wars is only going to heat up and increase more and more in these times, you know. Hey, now we're starting to see these uh, actual wars and rumors of wars are starting to actually be uh, actual wars in between the different nations and different kingdoms rising up against one another. And we're going to see that increase more and more in these times. Matthew 24, verse 7. A nation shall rise in this nation, and kingdom shall be. It says, a nation shall rise in this nation, and kingdom shall be. It says, a nation. Matthew 24, verse 7. A nation shall rise in this nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence, and earth places and diverse places. Right, nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And we're going to continue to see that increasing more and more in the times throughout the whole planet Earth, you know. Matthew, and, uh, there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Right, famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All this is going to continue to increase right along with the uh, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Matthew 24, verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Right, so these are just the increasing beginning of sorrows, the pushing of the RFID and the CHIP, the uh, Owl Temptation, the Time of Jacob you know, uh, the Great Insurrection, Armageddon, Armageddon 1, Second World Passport, the Third World Passport. So all these signs is going to come to pass and we can feel that for sure. So these are just the beginning of sorrows that are going to continue to see increase more and more in these signs. These increase in biblical signs, <clears throat> you know, these increase in biblical signs of the signs of the times that we are in. You know? This is uh, Matthew 24, verse 9. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall K-I-L-L -L you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Why shall we shall be hated of all nations for his name's sake? You know? Standing up for righteousness, Prophesying in the names of the Heavenly Father, you know, I will, 
know, imagine the time Bill is in this stuff in the names of the Happy Father the Howard, you know, so we're going to be hating on all nations for his namesake, and we are definitely fine with that, you know. This is uh, Matthew 24, verse 11. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Right, and, and, and especially as that's only, it's really going to increase in these times. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. This is uh, Matthew's, Matthew's 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall rise cold. Right, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall rise cold. We're going to see that increase more and more in these times now. Matthew 24, verse 12. But he that shall do unto the end, the same shall be saved. But he that do unto the end, the same shall be saved, which is the Israelites, the servants and prophets of the heavenly Father. You know? This is uh, Matthew 24, verse 14. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness, unto all nations. Then the end shall come. Right, so the beginning of the end of the end is being manifested, and that's what we're seeing, you know. So he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved, which is the Israelites. That's why the gospel of the kingdom is being preached throughout the four corners of the earth uh, unto all nations. Then the end shall come, and that's what we're seeing signs of it, you know. Hey, the, the, the sign of the end of the wicked rulership is coming to naught, and Jacob is going to be the next to rule. Because Esau's end of the world, Jacob begins with that follow, so it makes perfect sense. Hey, the Wadi Gahab Now I'm going to get into that Jeremiah. As we continue to chant down modern day Babylon the Great, as we prophesy against God and May God, Chief Bishop Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against modern day Mount Sierra, and we're prophesying against great countries and great kings of war and pestilence as well, too, now, so more than ever. Now, from the bring out that Jeremiah 51, as you see Babylon fall and now, so more than ever. This is uh, the prophet Jeremiah 51, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will raise up against. It says, I will raise up against Babylon, against them that dwell in the midst of them that raise up against me and destroy the wind. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 2, and I will send unto Babylon's famish that shall vanish into the land. For the land, it says, for the man in the day of trouble shall be against her round about. Uh, the prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 3, and against him that bend his bolt, that his heart bend his bolt, and against him that lifted himself up in his right and spared he Spare ye not her young man, score ye other all uh, hosts. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 4. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through her streets. Jeremiah 51 verse 5. But Israel has not been forsaken in Judah of his power. Uh, the Lord Yahweh of hosts, nor that land, nor that land is filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Jeremiah 51 verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, deliver every man's soul, be not cut off for her iniquity. But this is the time of the Lord Yahweh that power is vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 7. Babylon has been a daughter of Lord Yahweh and the Lord Yahweh has been a daughter of Lord Yahweh. Therefore the nation of man. Jeremiah 51 verse 8. Babylon is so called and restored now for her take on for her pain. And so that she may be healed. Jeremiah 51 verse 9. Who will have healed Babylon because she is not healed. For the sake of her let us go everyone to his own country. But her judgments reach unto heavens, and reach unto heavens, and lift up even to the skies. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 10, the Lord Yahweh has brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion, Zion, and works of Lord Yahweh with thy mouth. Verse 11, make bright the arrows, write those arrows, those pistols. Gather the shields, the Lord Yahweh has raised up the spirit of kings and Medes, which is the Russians. But his advice against Babylon to destroy it. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord Yahweh and the vengeance of his temple. Right, the temple are his people, the Israelites. From in ancient times all the way to modern day times. This is uh, the prophet Jeremiah 51 and verse 12. Set up the standard, the walls of Babylon. Make watch strong, set up the watchman. Prepare the ambushes for the Lord Yahweh have both advised. And he done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. Jeremiah 51 and verse 13. O thou dwell upon many waters, upon the churches. Thy end is come in the measure of thy covetousness. Prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 14, the Lord Yahweh of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men, as with caterpillar they shall lift up a shop against thee. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 15, he hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, he hath stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Verse 16, when he uttered his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He made lightning with rain, he bringeth forth the wind out of his treasure. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 17. Every man is rich by his knowledge, and every is confounded by it. Every found is confounded by his great knowledge. But his also image is also that there is a great in The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 18. They are vanity and worse than ever. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 19. The 
abortion of Jake was not likely, for he is a form of all things, and is her as a bride of his inheritance, and the Lord Yahweh of hosts is his name. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 20, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, and thee I will break the pieces of nations, and thee I will destroy kingdoms. Jeremiah 51 verse 21, and I will, it says, with thee I will break the pieces of the horses and his rider, and with thee I will break the pieces of the chariot and his rider. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 22, it says, I will also will break thee into pieces, man and woman, with thee I will break the pieces of the young man, and with thee I will break the pieces of the young man and the baby. Verse 23, and I will also break in pieces with the shepherd and his flock, and with thee I will break in pieces the captain. It says, with thee I will break in pieces the husband and his yokes of oxen, and with thee I will break in pieces the captains of rulers. Jeremiah 51 verse 24, and I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea, and all that evil that they have done in Zion, still to this day in your sight, saith the Lord Yahweh. Verse 25, and behold, I am against thee with a short mouth that saith the Lord Yahweh, who was the story of all the earth, and I will scratch out my hand upon thee, and I will roll thee down from the rocks, and I will make thee a burnt mountain. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 26, it says, uh, yeah, the prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 26, and they shall not take of thee a stone from the corner, nor a stone from the foundations, but thou shalt, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord Yahweh. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 27, it reads, it says, set up on standard in the land, both trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her together, against her the kings of Azeroth and Hades, and as the house of the capital against her, causes the uh, horses to come up as a rough caliph. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 28, prepare against her with the kings, it said, prepare against her with the nations of the kings of the kings, and the captains that were of all the rulers that were of all the lands of this dominion. The prophet Jeremiah 51 verse 29, and the lands tremble and sorrow for every purpose of Lord Yahweh. Benjamite Babylon is falling. <laughs> I mean, I can I cannot sound like the accent like the so-called Benjamite, you know. But you, they just say that for a prime example. And it's uh, Revelations 18 and verse one. Yep, Revelations 18 and verse one. It says, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Revelations 18 and verse two. It says, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon is falling. Is falling. It has become a habitation of deceivers, and a hole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every, it says, and a cage of every unclean, H-A-T-E-F-U-L bird. Revelations 18, verse 3, for all the nations have drunk the, the wine, the wrath of fornication, and the kings of the earth will have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundances of her delicacies. Revelations 18, verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that she be not protected of her sins, or received none of her plagues. Right, so it's very important for the Israelites to come out of the ways of Babylon mentally and spiritually. That's going to be our actual cherry speaking when we're approaching those times, you know. I mean, because we're definitely actually approaching those times, you know. But that's going to be a chariot. A chariot going to be mentioning it, saying it to the children of Israel, come out of her, my people, that you be not protected from sins, receive none of her plagues, you know. This is uh, Revelation 18 verse 6. You reward her, and as she rewarded you, and double, double unto her according to her works. And the cup which she had filled, filled to her bubble. I mean, filled to her double salak. Revelation 18 verse 7. How much she had glorified herself, led the listen. So much torment and sorrow give her. She has said in her heart, I said a queen, I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Revelation 18 verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire. Thus, for strong is the Lord, and how will we judge her? Revelation 18 and verse 9. And the kings of the earth will have committed fornication with her, and live the listen to shall bewail her. It says, Bewail her when they lament for her, when they shall see the smoking of her burning. Revelation 18 and verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, At last, at last, that great city, in one hour for the life. It says, That mighty city, for in one hour thy judgment come. Um, we'll continue on with reading. Revelations 18 and verse 11. It says, uh, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, but no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Revelations 18 and verse 12. It says, And the merchants of gold and silver and the precious stones and pearls of fine linen. 
and purple and silk and scarlet and all thy wood and all manner of uh, vessels and ivory and all manner of vessels and most precious woods and, and the grass of pine and all. Revelation 18 verse 13. And the cinnamon and the odors of ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Revelation 18 verse 14. And the fruit that thy lust hath all depart from thee. All things which were dainty and goodly and depart from thee, thou shalt find them no more at all. Revelation 18 verse 15. And the merchants of these things which were many rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of the torment, saying, We've been with Revelation 18 verse 16. It's that saying, At last, at last, that great city that was spoken of fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and death with gold and precious stones and pearls. Revelation 18 verse 17. But in one hour so great riches come to naught, and every ship master and all the companies and ships and sailors, as many as trade by sea, stood afar off. Revelations 18 verse 18, and they cried when they saw the smoke of a burning, saying, At last, what city is like unto this great city? Revelations 18 verse 19, and they had cast dust on their heads, and crying, weeping and wailing, saying, At last, at last, that great city, wherein hath made which all the ships in the sea by the reason. For in costing this for in one hour she is made desolate. Uh, Revelations 18 and verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, O holy, holy apostles and prophets. For Yahweh has revenged you on her. Revelations 18 and verse 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea. Thus was body shall that great city Babylon be gone down and shall be found no more at all. Revelations 18 and verse 22. And the voice of the harpers and musicians and hypers and jumpers shall be heard no more at all of thee, no craftsman man of uh, uh, whosoever craft be, shall be found any more in thee, and shall be a sound of a millstone, and shall be no more at all of thee. So, Revelation 18, verse 23, it says, And the light of a candle shall be shown no more at all of thee, and the voice of the bridegrooms and of the bride shall be heard no more at all of thee, and for thy merchandise were great men of the earth, for thy sorceries, all nations deceived. This is uh, Revelation 18 and verse 24. And in her is found the blood of the prophets and of the saints, and all that was slain upon the earth, right still to this day. So in one hour, Babylon is going to be made destined. You know? That's why we chanted down Babylon, prophesying against Babylon now, so more than ever. Beautiful thing to see the downfall of uh, Babylon. Now I'm going to switch it up and get into this uh, central digital bank currency of this RFID and the CHIP in order to buy or sell. This is uh, Revelation 13 and verse 16. And it calls to all, both small and great, rich or poor, free of bond, to receive a karate in their right hand, or in their F-O-R-E-H-E-A-D-S. Right, so in order to buy or sell, even if you're upper class or lower class of the economical spectrum of all the races on the planet Earth, this is gonna be a time where in order to buy or sell, because very soon the paper dollar, that's gonna be the thing in the past, as we pushing forth to this central digital bank currency of cash society, the pushing of this RFID and the CHIP in order to buy or sell. This is what they are pushing for as we are approaching those times because it's going to come into full effect and it's going to be fully mandatory of all everybody on the planet Earth to take it in order to buy or sell. So it's going to be some that's rebelling against it and it's going to be some that's going to be glad to take it. Revelation 13 and verse 17 and that no man might buy or sell save that we have the uh, that Karate or the name of the B-E-A-S-T or the number of his name. Right, so in order to buy or sell, if you don't got that karate, you won't be able to buy or sell. This is what we're entering into. You know? That's when uh, Revelation 3 verse 10 comes to play as well, to that habitation. Revelation 13 and verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him have understanding count the number of the B-E-A-S-T, or it is the number of a man, and his number is S-I-X 300 through score and S-I-X. Um, it's that Revelation 14 and verse 8. Another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink the wine, the wrath of her fornication. The right still to this day. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the BPASC in his image, receive his karagma in his F O R E H E A D or in his hand. Revelation 14, verse 10. The same shall drink the wine, the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured without mixture, and the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. Revelation 14 and verse 11. 
and the smoke of atonement ascending up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. They worship the EPAST in his image, and whosoever received the Quran in his hand. Um, so, so whosoever received that Quran and worship this image and take that uh, RFID and the CHIP, the upper part of that body, the right part of your body, and you're gonna get hit with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the Lamb. So that's why we tell the children of Israel, be not partaker of that. And that's a, that's that's gonna be an ultimate penalty if you do take that MOTB and that RFID in this R, uh, in this MOTB of this RFID and the CHIP, you know. And this is uh, Revelation 3 verse 10. It says, uh, because thou hast kept the words of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, and shall dwell upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Yeah, what's up, Mark? No, I'm uh, I'm downtown. Yeah. I mean, but at the same time, there's qualifications to it. <laughs> oh, you must be at the shop. Oh, okay. I didn't. I seen a little bit. All right. So yeah, that's the uh, our temptation as I read that Re Revelation 3 and verse 10. Hey, so as long as we keep the words and patience of the Heavenly Father, the Al Bashim al Shah, and we gonna keep us from the out temptation. And then I just got this uh, news alert from, uh, I believe it's a uh, free agenda TV, that what I have to subscribe to. And it was saying, uh, 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 I believe it was a uh, potential uh, coup, which called those uh, government coup attempt over there in Bolivia, and hey, that's that's what that uh, Luke 21 verse 25 comes in. The stress of nations with perplexity and the seas where it's born. A hey, second edge is nine verse three. A hey, uh, earthquakes and uproars and people in the world. You know, second edge is the 15th chapter. And as was, uh, there shall be sedition among men invading one another. And they shall not regard their kings nor their princes. And of course, they're actually standing in power. Hey, just like you had that recent protest over there in Kenya, and I believe uh, the president or the, the president over there in Kenya, I believe he had uh, withdrawn from some type of bill or something. I don't know what they, was, I forgot what they was protesting about. Uh, so he 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 withdraw that bill that he was about to sign. So it can ease the tensions down. But we this, these are just prime examples that we're going to see this increase more and more in these times. Uprises, uproars in the people world, discourse of nations with complexity and seas where it's born. Uh, and as, as they should not regard their kings nor their princes, and of course they're actually saying in power. But you got citizens rising up against their leaders in power, and we're seeing this worldwide, not just only in one place particularly, we're seeing this worldwide. So these uh, uproars and people in the world, these uh, great seditions, that these citizens going against their leaders in power, we're going to see that increase more and more. And we're definitely going to see it over here as well too, which we've been seeing that previously, you know, and as of recently, but we're going to see it increase, you know, throughout the whole planet Earth, and that's what we're seeing, you know. So a Wadi Haba Shimon Chat, an uh, 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 actual coup, an uh, actual coup was uh, about to take place over there in Bolivia, you know. Now this is a. Uh, yeah, since I, yeah, since I mentioned that, I'm gonna bring that out. Yeah, I'm gonna bring up that Luke 21 verse 25. So yeah, as I was bringing out that uh, Revelation 13 to verse 18 to verse Revelation 13 to verse 16 to verse 18, you know the pushing of this uh, MOTB of this RFID, I mean of this RFID and the CHIP in order to buy your sale, because they're gonna want you to take that technology in order to continue to maintain yourself in the society, and this is what they're pushing for in order to buy your sale. So these nations like the Moabites, <laughs> the, the Elamites, the Japhetic people, and these other nations. Now, only, the only one I can say that that probably can like heavy resist against, uh, 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 like heavy resist against it, I would say like Edomites, like like alt right type Edomites, 
those conservative type Edomites there because they're going to rebel against it, you know, and that's going to cause an uproar. That's going to cause an insurrection, you know, which we've been seeing over there, uh, over there in Europe. Because you've been having these uh, different leaders, they were saying that uh, we don't want that, uh, we don't want that RFID and the CHIP. We don't want this uh, digital dollar to uh, take a full effect in our country. Even uh, I believe former President Donald Trump, he had mentioned it a while back, like in uh, early March or early April, if I'm not mistaken. But they not, they, but it's not going to stop. They not going to stop the prophecies of your high Bashmi Hashem coming to pass. Hey, just like it says in Isaiah 55 and verse 11. You know the words of the Heavenly Father that's going to go. You know the words of the Heavenly Father that's going to go. And the concept which pleases Him. So these prophecies is not going to be avoided, and it's going to come to pass and be fulfilled. Hey, you can't stop the prophecies of your high Hashem Hashem. It says, uh, and there shall be, yeah, it says Luke 21 verse 25, and there shall be signs of the sun and the moon and the earth, it says, and the stars, upon the earth distress of nations were perplexity in this, and the seas of where it's born. Right, distress of nations were perplexity in the seas where it's born. That's what we're seeing, you know, the uproars of the people in the world, the seditions. We're going to see this increase more and more in these times. Just like that anti-coup over there, a, 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 a potential attempt of a coup over there in Bolivia. Just like we've been seeing uh, coups previously over there in uh, Sudan, you know, do different prices over there in Niger earlier this year, uh, uh, earlier this year, and then we've been seeing uh, uproars over there in Ecuador earlier this year, and these are just uh, prime examples that we're going to see more and more in these uh, times, you know. Even though we've been seeing that previously, and we're going to be seeing, and we've been seeing that as of recently, and we're going to see this increase more and more in these times. The stress of nations were perplexing the seas where you born, and the Wadi Habashimansha. Yeah, Luke 21 and verse 25. It says, There shall be signs in the sun and the moon. Right, so we're seeing signs in the sun and the moon, that is going to. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon in the stars upon the earth, the stress of nations. Right, upon the earth, the stress of nations. Work the flexing in the seas, raise your horn. Um, I'm going to get to that second edge down in verse 3 as well, too. Even though I brought it out already. Yeah, this is uh, second edge, chapter 9. And verse 3. Then I'm going to get to 2nd Edges, the 15th chapter as well, too, once again, even though I brought it out already. This is 2nd uh, Edges, chapter 9, and verse 3. Therefore, when there should be seen earthquakes, uproars, and people of the world, right, we're going to continue to see the uh, earthquakes, and we're going to continue to see the uproars and people of the world as well, too. And this is 2nd uh, Edges. Yeah, this is uh, the book of 2nd. Yep, 2nd Edges, 15. I'm going to start at verse uh, 14. Yeah, this is uh, the book of 2nd Edges, 15 and verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Right, because you look up that word, woe, woe, woe means destruction. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. This is 2nd uh, Edges, chapter 15 and verse 15. From the apocryphal books of the Holy Scriptures, and it reads, For the sword and the destruction draw up not. And we know the modern day sword is a weapon. It says, For the sword and the destruction draw up not. And one people should stand up and fight against another with swords in hands. Right, so one people should stand up and fight against another with swords in hands. And that's what we're seeing. And we're going to continue to see that increasing more and more these times. It says, uh, For there shall be sedition among men invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor their princes. And of course, their actions should stand in their power. Right, just like that uh, attempt coup over there in Bolivia, prime example. And as for, hey, they should not regard their kings nor their princes. And of course, their actions should stand in their power. And that's what we're seeing. Hey, just like a year ago, <laughs> you had that uh, potential uh, a coup over there in Brazil kind of similar to that, especially what uh, happened over here a few years back of a, uh, when they stormed the White House, those Edomites stormed the White House and stuff like that. And these are signs that we've been seeing. The stress of nations were perplexing and seized Reggie Moon. You know, hey, just like like two years back, I believe it was like last year, hey, you had this uh, you had this uh, Edomite most likely he'd probably be like a Spanish terror or something like that. You know, over there in New Mexico. You know, he was running for uh, he was running for some type of district and he had lost. So what he had was 
uh, his family members that he, his one of the, his uh, his, uh, his his uh, opponent, you know, his opponent, his, their family members that he had lost against, and he had uh, went through their neighborhood. He did like a drive-by shooting on them, trying to like injure his uh, his the uh, one of the, the the person that he was running against. Their family members, he had shot them in a drive-by shooting and stuff like that, you know. And I was surprised because he had a, uh, a previous uh, criminal, uh, he had a previous criminal uh, history, you know. And I'm surprised they was, I'm surprised that they let him still run and stuff like that, you know. And this was, this was a Spanish terror Edomite, you know. And these are just prime examples that we're going to be seeing more and more in these times, you know. Hey, just like last year, like a year and a half ago, yeah, we'll say like two years and a year and a half ago. And you had this, uh, I believe she might have been a Benjamin Mike over there in New Jersey. And then she got, uh, it was like an isolated incident. And she was some type of like, a, uh, I don't know, she was like some type of Congress. And then she was one of those type of ranks, or a New Jersey councilwoman or something like that. And then, uh, hey, she got her snot box run by, by, uh, by one of the tribes. Hey, these are just prime examples that we've seen previously. And as of recently, you know, we're going to see more and more in these times. So these are uh, prime examples that I just mentioned. You know, expressive nations with complexity and seize rage of war. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Hey, that should be sufficient among men, and many one another. And they should not regard their kings nor their princes in the course of their actions to stand in their power. Just like uh, Lancey Pelosi's boyfriend, you know, while she was, because uh, they were standing over there in San Francisco. I believe it's like a suburban area of San Francisco. This happened like like a year and a half ago, I believe. It was uh, Nancy Pelosi. She had stepped down from uh, stepped down from her position. I would say about like uh, two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Now the, the person that did that to her husband, I believe he had found guilty. Now he's serving like 30 plus years in prison. So these are some prime examples that we're gonna see more and more in these times. You know? uh, but there should be sedition among men, pity one another. They should not regard their kings or their princes in the course of that action. They should stand in their power. So you're going to have citizens rising up against one another worldwide, which we're seeing right now. And you're going to see the citizens rising up against their leaders in power. That's as well, too. You know, certain type of laws that they feel like is uh, unrighteous decrees, which they prescribe. You know, they're going to uh, hide me against that, you know. And just like prime example that the protests that have been taking place over there in King, prime example, you know. And the president over there in Kenya, he had to withdraw the bill because he was just about to pass. You know? And they had like a hook for that. And they was, they, uh, I believe they had stormed the uh, prelim preliminary, if uh, what you call that, a preliminary uh, building that they were trying to storm and trying to enter into, you know. So we're going to see more increasing uh, prime examples of this around the world more and more now, so more than ever. And this is uh, second address 15 to verse 15. For the sword and the expression draw of nine, one people should stand up and fight against another with swords in their hands. Second edges 15 and verse 16. But there should be sedition among men if they be in the government. They should not regard their kings nor their princes in the course of their actions to stand in their power. Same thing that will happen to uh, that lady. I believe she's a former president now. She's like the first ever lady, uh, so called person of color. She might be an asteroid. She's a uh, dark skinned. She, yeah, she's a dark skinned asteroid over there in Colombia. This one time they they uh try to put they try to put like some type of powder powder or something like that some type of poison or powder or something like that so associates they was able to uh, detain the uh, male that had poison in it or some type of powder or something like that you know which you know which you know a lot of those uh a lot of those uh dark skin asteroids down there in Colombia you know they was just they was being discriminated against down there in the open and down there in Colombia. Especially the Israelites, that's a uh, dark skin reflect of the uh, tribes over there and down there in uh, Colombia. You know, especially the areas where there were slums over there. The, yeah, because they most like the northern kingdom of the dark skin consent, descent, you know, my complexion even darker. So, yeah, because she was like the first ever uh, vice president over there in Colombia, you know. So that shows you that uh, that's a prime example. You're going to have uh, citizens rising against their leaders. That's just one prime example, you know. Even though we've been seeing that from former presidents, like that just happened to uh, Obama back then, Bush back then, the uh, recent presidents uh, as of recently as well too. And as just prime examples that we're gonna see more and more of these in these uh, times. You know? And as, uh, so there should be sedition among men if they do one another, and they should not regard their kings nor their princes, of course, their action. So these are just prime examples that I just mentioned. 
that happened previously and has happened um, as recently as well too. So it's going to increase more and more in this time. You know, hey, discretion of nations with the flex and seize where you want. You know. So this is a uh, second edge, just 15 verse 17. A man should desire to go into a city and should not be able to. Right, it's going to be a time where a man should desire to go into a city and should not be able to. And these are the times that we're about to approach. You know. Hey, if you ain't got the RFID and the CHIP, you won't be able to cross town. You won't be able to uh, go certain places. You won't be able to buy or sell. You won't be able to do nothing. And these are just prime examples. A hey, man should desire to go into a city and should not be able to. A hey, famine in the world. The time of Jacob Shrope. The great perilous times. The great tribulations. And these are prime examples. A hey, man should desire to go into a city and should not be able to. A hey, leave the world behind. That's going to be like that's how it's going to be like that, like this in these uh, modern day times. They, they showing you those subliminal messages of what's expected about the country. You know? you know, it's not just for entertainment and stuff like that. It's actual, it's actually going to be taking place, you know. Hey, just like uh, just like that TV show, that TV show Fallout. I believe they're going to have like a season two coming up as well, too. And that shows you how the prime example that's how it's going to be in Babylon, you know. It's going to be a, it's going to be a desert, you know. But this time, Heaven Father's going to send full fire, you know. Because it's not going to be no inhabitants of the land, you know, once it comes to once it Send fire upon it. This is um yeah, second edges fits in verse 18. But because of that pride, the city shall be choked, and the house shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Right, Proverbs 16 verse 18. Pride go before destruction, they ought to be before it fall. It says, uh, but because of that pride, right, because of that pride. Pride go before destruction, they ought to be before it fall. It says the city shall be troubled, and the house shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Second, that just fits into verse 19. A man should have no pity upon his neighbor, which we're seeing right now, Matthew 24, verse 12. It says, uh, a man should have no pity upon his neighbor, but she'll destroy the house with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread in their tribulation. Right, Matthew 24, verse 21. Isaiah 19, and verse 1, the verse 2. Uh, Mark 3, and verse 23, the verse uh, 26. And uh, Luke 12, and verse 51. Now, this is uh, second, that just fits into verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famines and great death, the beginning of wars and powers shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils which shall I do when these evils shall come. Calm. And that's going to be just like this is taking place in Ezra's times. We're going to be seeing this in modern day times as well, too. Hey, there's no new thing in the sun. Since I mentioned that, I'm going to bring that out as well, too. So, yeah, this is what we out here continually, increasingly uh, out here prophesying about. Prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms, of war, evil, and investments, sound the alarm on these very important matters of these prophecies. So that's, that's about to come to pass and be fulfilled. And we are occupying the prophecies. Sound the alarm, sound the alarm, blowing the trumpet of these uh, very important matters that we are about to enter into. And it's about to come into full effect. You know, this is going to be very serious in these times, you know, as we are approaching those times. And this is uh, Ecclesiasticus. We got Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, verse 1. It says to everything there is a season and a time of every purpose in the heaven. Right, for there is a time to seasons and every purpose in the heaven. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 2. And a time to be born, and a time to DIE, and a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that witch's plant. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 3. And a time to KILL, and a time to heal, and a time to break down, and a time to build up. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 4. And a time to weep, and a time to laugh, and a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 5 and reads, and a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, and a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 6, and a time to get, and a time to lose, and a time to keep, and a time to cast away. Uh, verse 7, and a time to run, and a time to sow, and a time to decide, and a time to speak. Right, so ultimately we are in the increasing times of uh, speaking of these uh, prophecies, of these war, of uh, war, evil, and a pessimist. It's only going to continue to increase, you know. What? This is uh, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 8. And a time to love, and a time of H A T E, and a time of war, and a time of peace. Right, so we're definitely living in the increasing times of H A T E. We're living in the times of uh, war as well, too, just like it says in 2 Kings 16 verse 18. Yeah. So all of this is going to continue to increase. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. The thing that has been is that what shall be, and that what shall be done, there's, and that what shall be done, there's been the thing of some. Right, so that's going to be the thing of some. Like the prophets of old, you know, they were prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war, even investments, and that's what we're doing in modern day times. Prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war, even investments. So there's no new thing in the sun, and this is uh, modern day Babylon, 
This is a modern day uh, Spirit Street, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. This is a uh, modern day Tower of Babel. This is a uh, modern days of Lot. This is a uh, modern days of uh, Noah, Spirit Street. So there's no new thing in the sun. Ecclesiastes does 1 and verse 10. Is there anything therefore it may be said, see this is new, and have been already of old time which was before us? Ecclesiastes does 1 and verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come and those that shall come after. Time. Now I'm going to get into that uh, Joel, the uh, Before I bring that, I'm going to bring out that Amos. We got this uh, Amos 8 and verse 11. It said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will send a famine in a land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but the hearing of the words of the heavenly Father Yahweh. Right, so it's going to be a famine of words as well, too, as we're approaching those uh, times. You know, the modern day famine of words, just like it was an uh, ancient famine during those times, you know. Ancient famine of words during those times, we're going to see this in modern day times as well, too. It makes perfect sense. There's no new thing on the sun, you know. So it's going to be a lack of bread, lack of water, but the heavenly other words and the heavenly Father Yahweh, famine of words, you know. Amos 8 verse uh, 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the words of the Lord Yahweh, and shall not find them. Right, so many shall run to and fro, try to seek the words of the heavenly Father Yahweh, and shall not find them. And these are the times we're about to enter into, you know. Amos 8 and verse 13, and that they shall the fan, fair virgins and young man and the thirst. Now I'm going to get into that Daniel 12 verse 1. Now this is uh, Daniel 12 verse 1. And at that time, shall I just stand up the great prince? Or standing for the children of the great prince? It's like we need to get to times. We see this in times. And there shall be a time of trouble. Which the times that we're about to approach. Slowly but surely, we're approaching those times. Such as that was, since that is less than nature. Even to the same time, and at that time, that I think we should be delivered by the Israelites. And that one should be found written in the book. Daniel 12 verse 2. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall win some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting content. This is uh, Daniel 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as stars forever and ever. This is uh, Prophet Daniel 12, verse 4. It says, Without the Daniel shall be words to sit in the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Right, so many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased, as I've brought out Daniel 12, verse 4. And just like uh, Daniel's in the 12th chapter, it's going to be a troubling time since there was a nation was created. Because <coughs> Michael the Archangel is going to have to stand up for the children of our people, which is the Israelites. Especially in these uh, modern day times, as we approach in these uh, very serious times. Now I'm going to bring up that Jeremiah. Yeah, this is uh, the prophet Jeremiah. Again, as soon as I get through with uh, Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, then I'm going to get to that uh, Joel, the 3rd chapter. Wadi This is uh, the prophet Joel, chapter 3, verse 1. Prophet Joel, 30th verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord Yahweh, saying, The prophet Jeremiah, 30 verse 2. Thus speak the words of the Lord Yahweh of Israel, saying, Write all these words that I have spoken unto thee in that book. The prophet Jeremiah, 30 verse 3. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. Saith the Lord Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land which I give to their fathers, and they shall possess them by the actual Israelites. This is uh, Jeremiah 30, verse 4. These are the words that the Lord Yahweh spake concerning Israel, concerning Judah. Right, so the heavenly Father, he's only in the midst of his people, the Israelites. Jeremiah 30, verse 5. For thus saith the Lord Yahweh, we have heard a voice of, of uh, trembling and a fear, if not a peace. The prophet Jeremiah 30 verse 6. Ask ye now see whether a man does prevail the child, wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his horns? And travail and all the uh, all the faces are turned into pillars. The prophet Jeremiah 30 verse 7, at last for the day is great, so none is likely. It is even a time of Jacob's struggle, but he shall be saved out of it. So he that shall be saved out of it, which is the servants and prophets of the heavenly father. Because it makes sense because the scripture says in the book of Amos, the third chapter, the heavenly father revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, which is the Israelites, from our ancestors and forefathers all the way into us. That makes us the Israelites, you know. And this is, uh, yeah. Come. Now, if we get into that Joel, the third chapter. So, definitely for sure, we're about to enter in the time of Jacob's trouble, but he that should be saved out of it, which is us, Lord willing. And this is uh, the prophet Joel, 3 and verse 1. 
It says, For behold, in those days and in time when I shall bring again the captivity from Judah and Jerusalem. Right, Judah and Jerusalem, the 12 tribes of Israel, Zion to Zion. You know, the scripture said there's a controversy in Zion to Zion, the actual Israelites. And Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. You can read that in the book of Galatians. And, uh, yeah, Galatians, the fourth chapter, if I'm not mistaken, Galatians 4, verse 26. I'm not trying to push the scriptures, bro. Yeah, this is uh, Joel chapter 3 and verse 2. And I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Right over there in Western Asia. That's why the Heavenly Father slowly but surely gathered the nations up over there in the area for his people Israel, you know. Zion to Zion. Joel chapter 3 verse 2. And I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will plead with them for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. Yeah, because they depart the Lord's land. I would say that's in Luke 21 verse 24. It says Jerusalem should be tried down to the Gentiles be filled, and that's what we're seeing. Yeah, this is uh, Joel chapter 3 and verse 3. And they have cast lots from my people, and they have given a voice for harlot, and so they grow up wine that they might drink. Right, musket and wine, so the heavenly father have forgot about that. And he required that which is past as well, too, and what's taking place as well, too, what they did from doing to the children of Israel, mentally, spiritually, financially. That's why the scripture says, uh, Deuteronomy 28 verse 43, the stranger that is within thee shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. They shall be the head, you shall be the tail. You know, you should be the, uh, you should be the, they should be the lender. You know, I think they should be the lender and you should be the borrow borrower. But very soon, that's going to uh, reverse around. Because we're going to be the head, they're going to be the tail. You know, because they're going to be uh, serving the children of Israel, you know, because that's going to be reverse around. That's going to be like a 360, you know. This is uh, Joel chapter 3, verse 4. It says, Yea, what have you to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? Like the Hamadic nations and on the coast of Palestine, those Ishmaelites. It says, When you run to me a recompense, and every recompense was for you and speedily, and I will turn your recompense upon your own head. Right, so totally that recompense is definitely come upon their own head. These uh, Ishmaelites and these uh, Hamites, because they uh, they joined hand in hand with Esau to bring down the children of Israel and brought them into captivity. You know? So, right along with uh, small hatters as well, too, because they find that slave trade. So that, that recompense is, they're they going to get that recompense double. This is uh, Joel chapter 3 verse 5, because you have taken my silver and my gold, right, the apple of the Lord's eye, our forefathers, and have carried them into your temple, my good depressed things, right, the Israelites. Uh, Joel 3 and verse 6, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, right, the Grecians are the Edomites, that you might remove them far from their borders still to this day. Joel chapter 3 verse 7. Behold, I will raise them up out of the place where you have sold them, and I will turn your recompense upon your own head. Right, so the heavenly father is going to raise us out of the place where you have sold us, and he's going to return that recompense upon their own head, what they did to the children of Israel. That's why we're seeing Deuteronomy uh, 30 and verse 7 is in full effect. Hey, that's a beautiful thing called Halal Yahweh Shemel This is uh, Joel 3 and verse 8. The prophet Joel chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, uh, Behold, the prophet Joel chapter 3 verse 8 and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah and they shall send them to the Samaritans to the people for all from the Lord Yahweh has spoken right so these Edomites and these Idumians you know these are small hatters they're going to be in the hands of the children of Judah as servants and handmaids as slaves just like it says in Isaiah 14 verse 21 hey he that lead into captivity shall go into captivity he that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the faithful of the saints. The saints are the history. Starting a question. Joel chapter 3 and verse 9. It says, uh, I'm going to read verse 8 again. God bless you, brother. All right, Sam, you thank you. This is uh, Prophet Joel chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, Now was, <laughs> even though <laughs> even though Esau even going into captivity, because he, yeah, even though Esau even going into captivity, but hey, I'll take that. But, hey, he's still going to captivity, though, Esau. <laughs> hey, there's no way around it. There's no way around it, Esau. Yeah, he's still going to captivity. This is uh, Joel chapter 3, verse 8. It says, And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah, and they shall set them to the severities, so the people fall off from the Lord Yahweh has spoken to them. Right, for the Lord Yahweh has spoken to them. And the Heavenly Father is going to sell them off to the people who fall off, which is the severities. This is the modern day Yemenis people. From the Lord Yahweh has spoken. Joel chapter 3 verse 9. Proclaim ye this amongst the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty man, let all the men of war draw near and let them come up. Right, that's why we're seeing the escalations, nuclear escalations of tensions is rising up at an all-time high. 
Are we seeing uh, the North Korea, you know, the North Korea versus South Korea, Japan, the United States? We're seeing that's heating up. Hey, we're seeing what's taking place over there in uh, the Korean Peninsula. Of North Korea versus South Korea, Japan, the United States, North Korea versus South Korea. That's heating up now so more than ever. Hey, we're seeing what's taking place down there in the South China Sea. Uh, China versus Taiwan. That's heating up. And we're seeing what's taking place over there in uh, the disputed territory islands. You know, as I've been, as we've been mentioned that countless of times, we're seeing that increasing. China versus the Philippines and the United States. They're going to have to get involved in that. What's taking place over there in the Korean Peninsula? The United States is going to have to get involved in that. So, you know, all these nuclear escalations and tensions that the United States getting themselves into, you know, hey, they're going to uh, have to get it. They're going to have to get involved in it. And that's what we're seeing that Joe Well 3 and Verse 9 is in full effect. And the Heavy Father is going to continue to waking up the mighty men of these uh, armies and nations. And that's what we're seeing. Hey, what's taking place over there in Western Asia? That's only going to continue to increase, especially the ongoing escalations we're seeing over there in the Dragons of Arabia, you know, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Arabian Sea, the Red Sea, you know, over there in that area. Ongoing escalations are heating up between those different nations. You know the Houthi rebels, which is that Iranian-backed group over there in Yemen, and then you got the uh, you got the coalition forces, Yemen, the uh, the Houthi rebels going against, which is uh, Great Britain, the United States, the IDF Edomites. You know they, they're going to be continuing targeting them and anybody that's affiliated with these uh, cargo ships when they importing and exporting goods back and forth. But sometimes they have to reroute because that might affect the economy as well too. You know. This is um, Joel chapter 10, verse 10. It says, uh, Beach of plowshares and the swords and the of the spears, and let the weak say I'm strong. Right, now we're starting to see, let the weak say I'm strong of these uh, armies of nations. Hey, we, we see in uh, Iran pretending building up their nuclear capability. We see in North Korea pretending building up their nuclear capability. And we see in these other different armies of nations building up their nuclear capability as well, too. Now we're starting to see, let the weak say I'm strong. That's why we're seeing military exercise drills and stuff at an all time high. Nuclear, uh, nuclear military spending between these nations is up at an all-time high and nuclear escalations and tensions are rising up between the different nations and different kingdoms it's ramping up at an all-time high and now we're starting to see that the weak say control of these uh, armies of nations Yeah, this is uh, Joel chapter 3 verse 10. It says, Beat your flashes and swords and plenty books into spirits and let the weak say I'm strong. The prophet Joel chapter 3 and verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen <clears throat> and gather yourselves together round about this to cause like mighty ones to come down and build your house. Joel chapter 3 and verse 12. Let the heathen be awakened and come up into the valley of Jehoshaphat. But there I will sit and judge all the heathen round about. Right, so the heaven clock is going to sit and judge all the armies of the heathen and the nations round about. As he's slowly but surely gathering them up over there in Valley Jehoshaphat. So he's pleading with them for his people and for his heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations of part of his land. But that's a controversy as I am. So he's only in the midst of his people. He's doing this for his people you now. So he can deliver his people before he can uh, save his people and his Israelites. You know. Joel chapter 3, verse 13. It's like it says in the prophet Isaiah, the 11th chapter, he's coming back for the remnant of his people, the actual Israelites. He ain't coming back for no IDF Edomites. He ain't coming back for no small habits. He's coming back for the, the Israelites. He ain't coming back for all nations. He's coming back for the children of Israel, the actual Israelites, not those imposters claiming to be us. He's coming back for the actual Israelites. Like it says, Psalms, the eighth, third chapter, hit ones, that the Israelites is waking up to the fact that who they actually are and call the law the Hawa of Israel. This is uh, Joel chapter 3 and verse 13. Put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come ye ye down for the, for the press is full. It says, Put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come ye ye down for the press is full and the fast overflow for that wicked is great. The prophet Joel chapter 3 and verse 14. It says, Multitudes and multitudes in the battle of decision. For the day of the Lord Yahweh is near the battle of decision. Right, so multitudes and multitudes in the battle of decision. Because the day of the Lord Yahweh is near the battle of decision. The battle is supposed to be. Armageddon, um, Armageddon, um, Armageddon, um, second world pass, behold, third world coming quickly, wars and women's and wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, so it's only going to increase and it's going to heat up now, so more than ever, hey, shout out to that brother in Alvador, prophets on the scene, judgment coming to him, this is uh, Joel chapter 3 verse 15, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall be drawn their shining, the prophet Joel chapter 3 verse 16, it says, the Lord Yahweh shall also roar out of Zion, 
and uh, utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens shall, and, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Wait for this to go past. It says the Lord Yahweh shall go out of Zion. It says and utter his voice from Jerusalem. It says in the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strengthening of the children of Israel. Right, the actual, right so the heavenly father is going to be the hope of his people and the strengthening of the children of Israel. So that shows you that he's only in the midst of his people. You know, this, uh, so he's not in the midst of all nations. He's only in the midst of his people and his election. That's why he's coming back for the remnant of his own people. Joel chapter 3 verse 16, the Lord Yahweh shall go out of Zion, Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem. It says, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord Yahweh shall be the hope of his people, and the strengthening of the children of Israel. The prophet Joel chapter verse 17, so shall you know that I am the Lord Yahweh, your power dwelling in Zion, Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. The prophet Joel chapter verse 18, and it shall come to pass in that day, that the mountains shall drop down a new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers and Judah shall flow with waters, and the fountains shall come forth out of the house of the Lord Yahweh, and shall waters in the valleys of Shittim. The prophet Joel 3 verse 19, it says, Edom shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate of wilderness, for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. The prophet Joel 3 verse 20, but Judah shall dwell forever and ever, and Jerusalem for generations and generations. Uh, the prophet Jeremiah, uh, the prophet Joel, Jeremiah, well, I will cleanse that blood that I have in my hands. It says, for the Lord, you have to dwell in Zion, in Zion. Um, now, let's see. Now, let me switch up the spirit again today. Ezekiel, the 35th chapter. Yeah, this is out uh, of prophet Ezekiel chapter 35 verse 1. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Ezekiel 35 verse 2. It says, Son of man, set thy face against God and not make God. Chief Prince of Meshach, too, was prophesied against him. Let me know a lot here. Ezekiel 35 verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesied against him. Right, so we are prophesying against uh, Mount Seir. Just like the prophets of old prophesied against ancient Mount Seir. Now we are prophesying against modern day Mount Seir. Hey, call the Lord Yahweh of Israel. Ezekiel 35, verse 3. And thus saith the Lord Yahweh. Yahweh, thy power, behold, O Mount Seir. I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee. And I will make thee a burnt mountain, and make thee most desolate. Ezekiel 35, verse 4. And I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord Yahweh. Ezekiel 35, verse 5. Because thou hast shed innocent blood, and thou hast shed the blood of the children of Israel. Still continue to do it still to this day. Ezekiel 35 or 6. Right, just I believe it was like two months ago, two and a half months ago. You know, you had this uh I believe she was like a she had to be like an elderly, elderly Judah. She had to be like in her 60s, 60s, like 65, 67. And then you had this Edomite, he was like uh, 81, 83 or something like that. And then uh I believe she was like an Uber driver. Yeah, like an Uber driver or something like that. And then she, he was, he was kind of thinking that she, she was about to set him up or something like that. You know how Esau is. Like when uh, Jake do something, you know, it's always about, you know, think him, they about to get set up or something like that, especially the Edomite, Edomite woman and the Edomite man, you know, always accused of uh, Jake being criminals and stuff like that, you know. So what he had did, he had shot and killed her and stuff like that. And he, he thought he was, thought he was being set up, you know. I believe she was like a Uber driver deliver to get deliver him some food or something or whatever or come to pick him up or something as a new driver and he come and found out he's he, he said a Judite uh, elderly uh, elderly sister you know and the, and she, he kind of thought she was probably on some type of uh, BS or something like that and then he had shot and killed her and she was screaming for begging for her life and stuff like that that, sh that shows you that uh, he saw Edom is a uh, merciless, merciless he had no uh, compassion towards no one and he don't, he don't even have compassion towards his own people that's how, that's how the, the, that the ultimate deceiver, the, the ultimate deceiver, the wicked of he, of he is. You know? 
Now, of course, us Jake, we do that as well too, towards the other nation, towards one another. But Esau, he, he's definitely on top of that. This, this dude is ruthless, man. He don't care about nobody. He don't even care about his own self. He don't even care about his own people, you know? I mean, uh, us Israelites, we like that as well too. At least we had some type of compassion or something like that for one another, or towards the other nations and stuff like that. But Esau, he don't. But when he in that mindset, but when he in that, uh, that Edomite, when he in that Edomite supremacy type mindset, that's what he uh, thinks of all the nations of the planet Earth. And that's what he thinks about the towards the children of Israel as well too. Like it says, Ezekiel 35 verse 5, he still got the perpetual not liking the children of Israel and has shit in his blood. So what the children of Israel still to this day? That's just a prime example, you know. And just like that uh, Judite chick, I believe she was like 19, 20 years old. It was like two and a half months ago or like a month ago. But it was recently though, over there in Milwaukee, like the uh, suburban, uh, suburban parts of Milwaukee. And then, you know, this uh, Judite chick, you know, she was young. She was about like 19, 20 years old. And then the dude, he had to be like 31, 33, something like that. And then, you know, come to find out when they had a first encounter with each other, I believe they was on a first date or something like that. And then next thing you know, after the, uh, the date was over, they had like a dinner or something like that. Next thing you know, this damn Edomite have uh, chopped the whole body up, put it in different parts of different locations. Hey, that's the hey, What scripture says, never trust thy enemy for iron rush, so become his wickedness. So just like just like us Israelites can't trust one another, hey, we can't trust us all either. You know? His words were spoken and put the war was in his heart. So hey, he been doing that countless of times for generations on generations, almost still to this day. And he still got that perpetual not liking the children of Israel. These are just prime examples that I just mentioned. Even though we've been seeing some uh, recent ones and ones previously, and as recently as well too. So hey, just like we like that towards one another, we got that evil eye towards one another. Hey, we gotta be like that towards Esau Edom as well too in these uh, days, you know. Because he's he's really gonna show his uh, true form how he will how he feel about you uh, tribes, you know, the twelve tribes of Israel, from the you know, northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, man and woman. And Esau, he's gonna show his, his true horns, and he's definitely showing it, you know. You know, I'm just saying it as a prime example. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 6. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord Yahweh, and I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Says thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Ezekiel 35 verse 7. Thus I will make thou scare most desolate, and I will cut off him that passeth out, and him that returneth. Ezekiel 35 verse 8, and I will fill thee his mountains with his slain man, and thy hills, and thy valleys, and thy rivers, shall they fall, and they are slain with the sword. Ezekiel 35 verse 9, and I will make thee perpetual desolation, and thy city shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the boy of power and power. The prophet Ezekiel 35 verse 10, because it said, Ezekiel 35 verse 10, because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we says wherever the Lord Yahweh was there. The prophet Ezekiel 35 verse 11. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, and I will do thee according to thy anger, and according to thy enemy, which thou hast she is not in the and it's them for I stand to this day, which I will make thee myself known among them when I have judged thee. The prophet Ezekiel 35 verse 12, because thou hast no is that and thou shalt know that I am the Lord Yahweh and that I have heard all the blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel right still to this day. Boast for proudly to this day too. It says, uh, saying they are made destined, and they are given us to consume. Ezekiel 35 verse 13, Thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me, and ye have multiplied your words, I have heard them. Ezekiel 35 verse 14, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, thy power. It says, when the whole earth rejoices, I will make thee desolate. Ezekiel 35, verse 15, as thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate. So I will do unto thee, and thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all that I do, and all of it. And they shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, uh, thy power. Uh, now I'm going to bring up the book of Obadiah as well, too. Said the Lord Yahweh, thy power and all Edom. We had heard a rumor from the Lord Yahweh, and the ambassador is sent among the Edom. Arise, 
sea and let us rise up against her in battle. Obadiah 1 verse 2, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, thou art great despised by the small hands. Obadiah 1 verse 3, The pride of thy heart hath deceived thee, thou the well in the cluster of rocks, who habitation is high. And this saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to ground? Obadiah 1 verse 4, It said, Though thy exalt thyself as the evil, as thou set thy nets, like the American flag, that evil, evil symbol, and all these uh, uh, eagle symbols for Edom the well that Obadiah 1 verse 4 Thou exalt thyself as an eagle and thou, thou set thy nest among the stars thence I will bring thee down saith the Lord Yahweh Obadiah 1 verse 5, 5 If thieves came to thee if robbers by night how art thou cut off will they have not stone till they have enough even the gate creepers came to thee will they have leaves some grapes this is the book of Obadiah 1 verse 6. It says, uh, How are the things Esau searched out? How are his hidden things are sought up? Obadiah 1 verse 7. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the borders. The men that were that were at peace with thee have deceived thee, have prevailed against thee, that they eat thy bread and have laid a wound on their wound under thee, and there is no understanding in them. Uh, this is uh, Obadiah 1 verse 8. Shall not in that day, saith the Lord Yahweh, even destroy the wise men out of Edom, and understanding out of the Mount of Esau. Obadiah 1 verse 9, the mighty men of Timon shall be dismayed, and shall that every one of them of Esau shall be cut off by slaughter. Obadiah 1 verse 11, call thy violence against thy brother Jacob, the shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Obadiah 1 verse 11, in that day thou wilt on the other side in the day that the stranger shall carry away captive in the forces and foreigners enter his gates and pass by upon Jerusalem. Even it was as one of them. Obadiah 1 verse 12, but, but thou hast, but thou should not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither should thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither should thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress, right even still to this day. Obadiah 1 verse 13, thou shouldst not have entered into the gates of my in the day of their calamity. Thou shouldst not look on their afflictions in the day of their calamity. Nor should have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Obadiah 1 verse 14, neither shouldst thou have stood in the cross ways to cut off of him that did escape. Neither shouldst thou have delivered up of those that did remain in the day of distress. Uh, Obadiah 1 verse 15, for the day of the Lord Yahweh is near upon all the people, right? All the, all the, all the nations outside of the nation of Israel, until the hand of all the nations that have now the children of Israel. Hey, the day of the Lord is upon all these other nations, who they did to the children of Israel. This is uh, Obadiah 1 verse 15, for the day of the Lord Yahweh is near upon all the people. How done shall be done unto thee, and thy reward shall return upon that one head. Obadiah 1 verse 16, but as we have drunk upon the holy mountains, so shall all the heathen drink continuously, and they shall drink, and they shall swallow, sw swallow down Salakia, and they shall be as though they have not been. Obadiah 1 verse 17, and it reads, But thou, it said, but, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness in the house of Jacob, and shall possess their possessions. Obadiah 1 verse 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau a stumble, and they shall be kindled in them, and they devour them. And they shall be, be not any remain of the house of Esau. For the Lord the hour has spoken. Obadiah 1 verse 19. And they of the south shall possess the mountains of Esau. I'm going to read that a verse once again. Obadiah 1 verse 19. And they of the south shall possess the mountains of Esau. And they are the plain of the Philistines, and they shall possess the field, fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria. And Benjamin shall possess Gilead. Obadiah 1 verse 20, and the captivities of the hosts of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zephyrah, and the uh, captivity of Jerusalem, which is Zephyrah, and shall possess the cities of the south. Obadiah 1 verse 21. And the Savior shall come up from Mount Zion, Zion, to judge the mountains of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the house of God. Hey, so once that thousand years of Esau Edom is up, and they gonna be no more in existence. They not gonna be never heard of anymore. <laughs> hey, our, our, our children, our, our children, you know, they're gonna be like uh, like that what's the Edom? Like you don't even wanna know. <laughs> 
shows you that hey, Edom is going to be no more in existence once this thousand years of captivity is up. Hey, it's going to be no more remaining of the house of Esau. Uh, I do mean, I shot for he that wasted away, no more remembrance of these Edomites, you know. Hey, call Halal Yah Bashem Yah you know. Now I'm going to switch up the spirit and get into that Isaiah 55 verse 6. So once again, this is what we have here prophesying about. You know, prophesying his great country, his great kingdoms, where he put the blessings on. Bring out a few scriptures, then I'm closed out. Body how I should not like I mentioned before. And this is uh, the prophet Isaiah 55 verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord, Yahweh, while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Right for us Israelites, while the heavenly father still got his arms still stretched out still, and he's definitely coming back for the remnant of his people, like it says in Isaiah the 11th chapter. Hey, while the heavenly father still got his arms still stretched out still, we still have that opportunity chance to return back unto him, seeking the ways of righteousness, coming back to our heritage, our culture, our customs, our language, as being the Israelites, seeking the ways of righteousness, turning away from evilness and wickedness to the best of our ability, which we are doing as well, too, as being the subject of the promise of the heavenly father and the messengers, but the heavenly father doing more to the best of our ability. So we gotta seek the heavenly father now, so we're there for seeking what he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. This is uh, Isaiah 55 verse 7. That the wicked forsake his way, and unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him, and he will have mercy upon him as well as I have in Abu, but he will upon the heart. Right, so the heavenly father will upon the heart, and once return upon him in wicked ways, return back to him. And I will rock side that he will upon the heart and our evilness and wickedness, return back to the righteous path and the righteous ways in the sight of heaven. As being the sons and daughters of the truth of the power, which is Yahweh our power, and that's being the Israelite truth. Isaiah 55, verse 8. For my thoughts and not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord Yahweh. The prophet Isaiah 55, verse 9. But as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts and your thoughts. The prophet Isaiah 55, verse 10. But as the rain cometh down, the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, uh, one turn not thither, a spot here, but more than the earth. And he bore blood that me gave seeds in the shower and bread to the heat. The prophet Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth, and shall not return unto my void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper unto the things born unto my sin. And this is uh, the prophet Isaiah uh, 33 and verse 6. We got the prophet Isaiah 33 and verse 6. And the wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times, the strength of salvation. Fear the Lord, your with our house and church. Right, so wisdom and knowledge definitely should be the stability of our times, the strength of salvation. We fear the Lord, your with our house and church. But you look up that word stability, it goes into having a sound mind, a stable mind, especially the times that we're about to approach, when we definitely don't need that. You know, we're about to enter into the time of uh, Jacob's trouble. We're about to enter into the times of uh, perilous times. We're about to enter into the time of great insurrection. You know, the time of uh, famine and word. The ausentation, you know, great tribulation, perilous times. So, definitely, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. The scripture of salvation will be the out of the house of treasure. And scripture says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they continue to put on the whole you know, Like it says, uh, Ephesians 6 chapter. So once we return back into the heavenly Father, your help thy power, as being the sons and daughters of truth and power now so more than ever. We pray and seek his face now so more than ever. And humble ourselves on the side of the heavenly Father, your help thy power. And he will forgive our sins and he will heal our land. Because he's coming back for the uh, record of uh, people, even though Jerusalem is a people of the place. Uh, 
good time. Shout out to that brother Yahweh, the prophets on the scene, judgment come between, it never fails. Now we're going to get into that first round. Uh, soccer Federation headquarters, maybe? Yeah, we got this is uh, first round, 2 verse 15. It says, love not the world, but the things are in the world. Any man loves the world, but the world falls on him. Alright, so we got to love the ways that have fallen. Now we understand we are living in our humble, but mentally and spiritually, we cannot have our 100% those in mindset of the fans and the cares of this lifestyle, especially what it promotes on top of that as well too. Unrushed the breeds, even this weakness is still to this day. This is uh, 1 John 2 and verse 16. It says, uh, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Christ of the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, that's of the world, but it's not of the Father. So we want to love the ways of the Father, and not continue being to that 100% uh, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Because uh, Proverbs 16 verse 18, pride will be for destruction and all spirit before the fall. So the lust of the flesh and the pride of life is of the world, but it's not of the Father. That's why it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, love the cross of James 1 and 8, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you won't be in the stable mind and the stable ways of the heavenly Father and how of his righteousness. First John 2 and verse 17, the world passes away. Thus there will, but he that does will look at how will abide in heaven. So the world is Signing the names of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, 
uh, standing up for righteousness from the heavenly Father, Yahweh, bidding Israel to perish, uh, continue to make my calling necessary. So this is our reasonable service in the sight of heavenly Father, Yahweh. This is our Romans 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the name of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable in the world of Yahweh. All right, so we got to uh, be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be renewed in our mind. And what's perfect and good and good and acceptable in the sight of the world and the heaven. Inside the heavenly Father, you know, coming back to who we actually are, trusting the ways of righteousness inside the heavenly Father, and that's what's perfect and well and acceptable in the sight of the heavenly Father, Yahweh. So we cannot be performed to this world, but be renewed in our mind. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. You know? soon about to come to pass and be fulfilled. Hey, now's the time, the high time that we got to sleep. While the heavenly father still got his arms still stretched out, still for us to return back unto him. You know, choosing the ways of righteousness. Coming back to who you actually are as being the sons and daughters of the children of Yahweh, the children of people of the most high Yahweh. So, as the heavenly father still got his arms stretched out, still, he's showing us these uh, very important signs, uh, the signs of the times that we're entering into. You know, uh, so now's that time, the high time that we got to sleep, children of Israel. You know, so uh, Romans 13 and verse 12, the night is far spent, the days at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Right, so let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us Israelites. Uh, Romans 13 and verse 13, it says, let us walk honestly. Ephesians 6 and verse 11, put on the whole armor of Yahweh, that you may be able to, to uh, stand against the wiles of your receiver. Ephesians 6 and verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the rulers and the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in other places. Uh, Ephesians 6 and verse 13, wherefore take on to you the whole armor of Yahweh, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, have done all to stand. Verse 14, therefore have your arms girded up without the truth. And your feet sure with the preparations of the gospel of peace. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Above you all, taking the shield of faith, will be able to show the end of the push of the fight of God's wicked. Ephesians 6 verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians 6 verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication and watch the death of the And supplication for our sins. Uh, Ephesians 5 verse 15. See then that you are circumspect. Watch out from our surroundings from a spiritual standpoint, from a spiritual righteous standpoint, uh, they have a body of help. Continue to be circled back with our surroundings with the wisdom and our understanding of what that is well too. It's uh, Ephesians uh, 5 and verse 18. The sin did that you both circumspect, not as foolish but as wise. Ephesians 6 and verse 16, redeem the time because the days are evil. For us, we've got to continue to redeem the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not like hungry, as in wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding you will have in our words. And this is Ephesians 5 verse 18. It says, Be not drunk with wine, for in excess will be filled with the Spirit.
second chapter. And then we get out of this is our first Thessalonians 5 verse 3. What they should say is the safety of instruction upon them as they should bear with one the child, they will be sure to escape. First Thessalonians 5 verse 3. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that they shall overtake you as a thief. First Thessalonians 5 verse 5. Ye are the children of light, that is light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. First Thessalonians 5 verse 6. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober, right mentally and spiritually. First Thessalonians 5 verse 7. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunk are drunk in the night. First, Thess uh, First Thessalonians 5 verse 8. But let us who are of the day to be sober, and putting on the breastplate, the breastplate of faith, and love, and for and helmet, and hope of salvation. Come. Now I'm going to get into that Second Timothy. Got this uh, Second Timothy chapter three and verse one. It says, "This know also in the last days, perilous times shall come." Right, we already in those perilous times, so as we're seeing it, <laughs> it's evident. You know, Second Timothy three and verse two: For men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and thankful of home. Second Timothy three and verse three: Without acts of affection, true breakers, false accusers, incontent, fears, despise, like those out of order. Isaiah five verse two. Second Timothy three and verse four. Traders, hippies, high minded, the loves of pleasure more than the loves of power. Verse 5, 2 Timothy 3, verse 5, have no home without us, but the dying power of the earth and so stuff away. 2 Timothy 3, verse 6, for of the sort of it which creep into the house and they have sent home. Later will we sin, and later will we die verse us. 2 Timothy 3, verse 7, ever, it says, ever learn and never be able to come into the house of the truth. 2 Timothy 3, and verse 8, now in Genesis and Genesis. Moses so do also resist the truth. Men of more minds and other race concerning the faith. 2 Timothy 3 verse 9. But they shall receive no for the their fathers shall manifest unto all men as there also was. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine and a man with life and purpose and faith alone, suffering and charity and patience. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 11. Persecution and affliction which came unto me, I and Antioch. And I can lamb the lecture of which persecution I endure. All of them for you how we're delivered. Right about four father shall come. This is uh, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 13. But evil men is seducer, so that's worse, and worse deceiving than being deceived. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou shalt learn, like the doctrine of a heavenly father to how and has been assuring of knowing of whom has thou learned, right from our elders. And this is um Yep, so I'm gonna uh, bring up this last scripture, then I'm gonna close it out for Wadi Abba Shalom Shah. Yeah, this is uh, Prophet Isaiah. Yeah, this is uh, Prophet Isaiah, uh, that verse 10. Yeah, Prophet Isaiah, that verse 10. It says, In that day that shall be a just, but shall stand for the ensign of the people, shall the Gentiles see. For the ensign of the people shall be. Shall the Gentiles seek and his first shall be glorious. Uh, the prophet Isaiah, that verse 11, it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord Yahweh shall send his hand again a second time to the cover of the remnant of his people, which shall be a left from Syria, like a right from Syria, and from Egypt, and from Paphros, and from Bush, and from Elon, and from Sharon, and from Mar, from the lions of the sea. Right, these are the areas that Israelites are still scattered at, still to this day. Isaiah 11, verse 13. And it shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and the gathered together of the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Right, the outcasts of Judah, and uh, the outcasts of Israel, and Judah from the four corners of the earth. So that makes us the Israelites. Because, like uh, scripture says, uh, Hosea 1 verse 10, Israel should be a sand seat. You know? This is uh, Isaiah 11 verse 14. I'm going to read verse 13 again. Yeah, so got this uh, Isaiah 11 verse 13. The envy also of the people shall depart. Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not face Ephraim. Isaiah 11, verse 14. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines states towards the west, and they shall spoil them on the east of heaven, and they shall let it in upon Edom and Moab, which is what Amish shall be. The prophet Isaiah 11, verse 15. The Lord Yahweh shall utterly destroy the town of the Egyptians. With his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the rivers, and shall smite it even seven springs to make man go with dry shore. The prophet Isaiah 11 verse 16, and there should be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be uh, left of the Syria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close it out with the spirit of God, grace and mercy of Yahweh Yahweh Shah. On this uh, uh, 
I'll say uh, June the uh, 26th, 2024, on this uh, Wednesday afternoon, a hey, round three back out here again. The Spirit Fire Christ and Mercy of the Hawaii Outshot. So, with that, I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Hashem, and Kadash, and the Heavenly Father, the true name is Yahweh. In this on we got the Son, Hashem, and the name of Mashiach, Yahweh Shah. Those are the true names in the ancient Pele of Hebrew, the Lashmon Cross, the Tongue. And I say, Barak to the uh, elders, Barak and Barak and Barak. Until next time, I will say, Kwame Asherala, and Shalom.